So here's some idea on watercolor paper. I like uh, Fabriano paper and the best grade is called Artistico from Fabri Fabriano and it's the most expensive grade because it's 100% cotton. And then you can get cheaper grades of Fabriano is, let's see this one here. Sometimes this is called student or studio grade and it's 25% cotton and so the rest of it is cellulose fiber from trees. We also have uh, here, this is Paul Rubens which is a Chinese paper which I believe is um, a hundred percent cotton, although I don't see that on the front. It certainly behaves that way in terms of its um, ability to stand up to um, wear and um, when you're painting you can uh, manipulate the paper a lot of times when it's a hundred percent cotton and um, you can use things like a palette knife to scratch into it uh, as long as you do it lightly and it holds up. So the 100% cotton paper really holds up well. And uh, what I'm finding now is it's difficult to get that from Fabriano. So I'm having to use um, the studio grade, which is the uh, the 25% uh, cotton fiber. Here's an example of some sheets I've, um, I've ripped down from a large sheet of single sheet of watercolor paper into quarter sheets. And um, if this was the uh, artistico grade, grade the 100%, it would have a watermark on the side edge that would say Fabriano. So some of the features you have to watch for in watercolor paper are what's called the, uh, the weight of the paper, which relates to the thickness. And uh, the paper I like is called 140 pound, or the equivalent is 300 grams per square meter. That's the weight. So the higher the weight, the th basically the thicker the paper and the more durable the paper. This is um, 140 pound which uh, is kind of a balance between expense and um, and workability. So this works except you might have to do um, a procedure called stretching when you first use it on the thinner paper, the 140 pound. Uh, the thicker paper it hold, it's, uh, doesn't seem to need the stretching step. It's pretty damn thick. So it doesn't uh, get affected by the moisture, by the water so much. So just to uh, give you an idea, this is an overview. We have the, the variables involved are the nature of the fibers in the paper, which amounts to the um, the amount of cotton fibers. We have the thickness of the paper. The heavier grade paper, uh, the, the heavier the grade of paper is, the uh, more expensive it is. Um, we have also two terms, cold press and hot press. Um, cold press, which is refers to how the paper is made, it's pressed cold, presumably, um, on big steel rollers when it's being made. Uh, it has a slightly rough surface. And you'll find if you're doing watercolor, especially as a beginner, this hot press paper is a little more forgiving in terms of um, the end result. If you use, did I say hot press? This cold press paper, is more forgiving. 
if you use hot press paper, um, it's very, very smooth. And it, it seems to show up every small little nuanced brush mark that you make rather than giving you more of an averaged effect. So um, I would recommend certainly using cold press for most of your applications in watercolor. Um, the way you might use hot press is if you're doing ink drawings. So a smooth paper is nice for using a pen. It doesn't get hung up in the little nooks and valleys of the uh, rougher paper. Um, so hot press for that or hot press sometimes if you're a seasoned artist, if you are doing a very detailed paper uh, painting and uh, very, very detailed, highly detailed, and you don't want the sort of smoothing, averaging effect of the rougher surface. Now this paper isn't marked as rough. You can get a so-called rough grade as well. And it's even rougher than, than this uh, surface here. You can't see this very well, but there are the slight indentations in the, in the cold press. In rough, it's rougher still. So we have the uh, hot press, cold press, we have the weight of the paper and or the thickness. Uh, you can have variables like this is extra white as opposed to um, maybe a more ivory color. Uh, we have the size and so on. So some of those things are fairly obvious. Um, anything else I can think of? Uh, just, I like the 11 by, uh, approximately 11 by 15 size of paper, and that works for me mostly. And again, that's a quarter sheet that's uh, obtained from a, a large sheet of watercolor paper that's uh, uh, 22 by 30 inches. And um, so that's another way of referring to, if you see the term half sheet or quarter sheet, it relates to a sheet that's uh, 22 inches by 30 inches. Um, hot press and cold press, you may hear the term not, which is odd, N-O-T. If you see paper referred to, uh, watercolor paper referred to as not, it's another term for cold press, which again means it has a nicely somewhat textured surface which is more forgiving when you're especially when you're a beginner so oh one last thing the other thing you can get are these media blocks of paper which means that the paper is, um, is sealed is glued all around the edges except for a small spot on the top that's left available and open. And the idea of that is that um, the, all the sheets are held securely so that you can paint directly on them if you wish. Um, you don't have to tape them down um, because they're held and that gives uh, sort of a, a good uh, um, secure surface that doesn't buckle so much when you're painting. Uh, or if you wish, you can slip a palette knife in the, in the little opening and go around with the palette knife and then you can take the sheet off. So that's called a media block. Um, this is very common with arch paper. Arch paper typically comes in blocks like that using a very strong black glue around the edges. So that's another option, block or a single sheet like this. Well, I hope that's good. Anyway, all of this paper, by the way, is, um, uh, is uh, acid free. Um, and uh, that's important because um, if it, if, you know, uh, if it has acid, content and it's going to yellow with age and uh, you want the paper to remain 
nice and pristine and white or ivory, whatever the color is. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit of a, a ramble through the labyrinth of paper. Thanks.